Good morning, my friends. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And sometimes that rejoicing is very, very difficult because this morning we are praying with a friend whose husband was rushed into heart surgery. Last night, the doctors told them if he doesn't have it, it's very fatal. But if he has it, it's very dangerous. So we are praying for this precious friend and her husband, whom we love so much with our church. And then another friend just a few days ago, her husband was rushed to the hospital and they thought he had a heart attack. And so these things come against us and my heart is so heavy, but I'm still rejoicing in the Lord. That's where our rejoicing is, not in situations, in circumstances, but who Jesus is. And we love our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive today. And as I was reading a story, there is a part in the Gospels where this name is said and we miss it sometimes. And in fact, when I met Terry in Galilee, the first message he ever preached was on this part of this message. And I have just kept it in my heart. I just love it because this is in Mark. Mark writes this in chapter 16 and in verse 6 because well let me start when the uh, women came to the tomb and they found that the stone was rolled away and then they found that when they looked in they saw in verse 5 entering in they saw a young man sitting on the right side clothed in a long white garment it was an angel they saw him and they were frightened, and he said unto them, Be not frightened, don't be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen, he is not here. Behold, the place where they laid him. Look, it's empty. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter. Mark says this because he must have heard it from the story after ones telling the story. And it says, and Peter, tell Peter that I go before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he said unto you. And he said, and Peter, because he knew that Peter, after denying Christ, yes, he had repented. Yes, he had wept, but he must have felt so low, so discouraged, so uh, lost everything. He thought maybe my calling, my everything, but Jesus wanted to restore Peter. And I love that because when we go to Luke and in Luke, it talks about, this is what Jesus was telling Peter before he was crucified. And it's chapter 22, verse 30. After he told them that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom one day and sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm going to give you such responsibilities. And then he turned to Peter and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. How wonderful is that to hear that Jesus is telling Simon, Peter, I have prayed for you. That when your faith, when you, your faith will not fail you. And when you are converted, I have prayed for you, Simon, that when you are converted, you strengthen your brethren. Because the devil is going to come, Simon. He's going to try to sift you, but I have prayed for you. And when we read in Hebrews, and this is just an incredible verse. Hebrews chapter 7, 25, it says, Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost. They come unto God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. This is talking about Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive right now, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Because Romans, when we go to Romans, Peter repeats... Uh, Paul the Apostle repeats this in Romans 8, 34, and he says, Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died. Yes, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. This is 
Paul the Apostle writing in Romans, the same thing Hebrews is writing. The Hebrews uh, was a writer that he wrote also that the Lord Jesus Christ makes intercession for us. So I just love that because imagine how the Lord Jesus Christ is praying. That's truth. Not imagine, believe. Not imagine, believe that right now the Lord Jesus Christ, just like in a small way, we're praying for our friend. We all have come together and we're praying. We pray for situations. The Lord Jesus Christ is praying for us. How awesome is that? And when I went to chapter 21 of John, and this is one of my favorite verses, uh, chapters, because Jesus now comes to Galilee. The disciples don't know. They've gone fishing. Peter has said, I go fishing. He went back to what he used to do. And when he went back to fishing, they caught nothing. And the, the word of God says it. They had nothing in verse 3 of chapter 21. They caught nothing. And Jesus asks them, children, have you any meat from the shore? He's crying out to them in verse 5. And they say, no. He wanted them to know. He knows they have caught nothing. He's asking them again. And they have caught nothing. And then he said, cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find you will going to find and then they realize that the lord jesus christ and they caught fish and then later it says 153 somehow i believe the lord wanted them to know the number so that they would know that every fish that they were going to go and catch for Jesus was going to be important. Every number, it didn't matter how many, Jesus was looking for the fish that they were going to catch. And then they all come to shore. But when they came to shore, verse 9 says, As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals. Fire of coals. Here is where, when Terry was preaching on this message, he brought this up where Smell is one of our strong, strong senses that when you smell something, you remember something quickly. And why it mentions there was a cause of fire right there, because when Peter, after they had caught Jesus and Peter follows, he's afraid. Yes, he has already cut the uh, servant's ear, but Jesus has healed it in the garden. But yet he doesn't run away after that. He still follows Jesus. But in the place where they were warming themselves, there was a coals of fire. It says it again. Peter was sitting there and Peter denied the Lord three times. And Jesus knew because in one of the gospels, it says Jesus turned and looked at Peter. Peter went out and wept bitterly. But here when the coals of fire must have reminded Peter of what he had done. But a few verses down, Jesus takes Peter and one-on-one -on -one calls him Simon again because he's going to call him again. He's going to restore everything back to him again. What an awesome Lord we have that he comes back. He wants fellowship with us. It doesn't matter when we fail him, when we do things that are not pleasing to him. He still loves us. He wants us to know that he has called us. He has chosen us. And when we come to verse 15, he said, after they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He called him Simon again. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you, Simon said. And then Jesus said, feed my lambs. He gave him more than just catching fish now. He was going to feed the lambs that were so precious to the Lord Jesus Christ. He was entrusting him with such a responsibility. And then it says, he said to him again, the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? But Jesus was saying it three times, I believe, to restore him three times for him to know. He denied him three times. And now he was saying, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yes, I love you, Lord. And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. I love this story. I don't know where you are and I don't know how discouraged you are. Maybe you have failed the Lord. Maybe you have done something that you just so beat up on yourself. And 
I know I've been there. I know there are times where I'm so discouraged, but the Lord comes with his beautiful voice. He restores us. He comes to us. He reminds us with his word how much he loves us. He reminds us how much he has He has died for us, and now he is alive forevermore, making intercession for us. How much more can he tell us how much he loves us? And just like Peter, he wants to restore us back to what he has given you to do. And he tells you to do it again. He tells you maybe something new to do, but obey him. Because he said, if you abide in me and I in you, if my words abide in you, you and the Father, as the Father loves me, I love you. And we will come and we will abide with you. And then the Lord restores us back. And I am just so encouraged with the story of Peter. Simon, Simon, he called him because he wanted him to know back to he was calling him not only to go and preach the gospel, to not only to go and bring fish, fishes of men, but also to feed the sheep, feed the lambs, feed his people that Jesus loved so much because he said, I am the good shepherd and I laid down my life for my sheep. And he was entrusting Peter with those precious sheep, you and I, to teach us, to guide us. And I know that in when we read Peter's uh, gospels, Peter's um, letters, it is so encouraging because he says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, to proclaim the works of the Lord because he has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Be encouraged today and know that the Lord loves you very, very much.